Hey guys, welcome to part one of our AMT 125th Dodge Super B Pro Street video build. So yeah, we're back with another one of these. I built one of these uh, a while back now. Um, I think it was about a year ago, maybe even that. We did the purple plum crazy one, if you remember it. Um, love the kit, love this car. That kit was a bit of a pig. It was all twisted. The chassis was bent. I had nightmare with the decals. It was just like the kit from hell. But we got through it and built it. And I absolutely, I just love the look of this car. Went digging around the internet soon after. I found this Pro Street. Thought, oh, I've got to get it. Got to get it. And it's been the stash ever since. I wanted to build it for a while. And Dan Pedersen put me on to the colour that we're going to paint it, this green with envy. And as soon as I mixed it for Pro Scale, I was like, oh, I have to use that colour. So I was rooting around the stash thinking, what can I start? And I need to use this colour. And the box art of this Super B, which was um, green, was like, yeah, we've got to use this on this car. So that's what's going to happen here as well. So there we go. That's the car we're going to use on this. So looking forward to it. I've never done a Pro Street car before ever. I love this car. It, it's literally my kind of car. It's a big barge of a car with loads of power. And it's pretty epic to be fair. So looks a much better kit than the old one. But we're going to jump in today. We've got a slightly different order on the videos. Um, we haven't got the stereotypical paint, clear coat, yada, yada, yada. We've got some building in between and a bit more different painting. And don't forget, this is for you guys who are patrons this now. Nobody else sees these videos. Um, you get the full three-part videos on Patreon. Everyone on ISM gets a much condensed video of the three parts with a completely different intro, outro, and a completely different voiceover as well. So this is for you patrons only. So make sure you leave a comment at the end. Please leave a comment. Your feedback means the world to me. Um, and make sure you give the video a thumbs up as well because it all makes a difference. Even though they're on listed videos, it makes a big difference to the algorithms on YouTube for me as well. Right, let's jump in. Let's get started with the build and come back at the end and have a quick chat before we go. Okay, so here we go. We are here with the AMT Pro Street uh, Super B. We've already built this kit before. We did the stock car, just the actual stock row car. Uh, a while back, we did it in Crazy Plum Purple, which looked excellent. Um, this kit seems to be a lot better quality than the old one. Now, there is a nasty seam to remove and flash, I suppose, as well, on this rear pillar. Uh, but a quick go over the scalpel and some UMP thinny sticks and sponges. Soon removes those, no problem at all. Takes a bit of work. Looks like I've done it in about 20 seconds here. But actually, in reality, it took me quite a while to get rid of these two seams either side. Once they're dealt with, we can deal with the other imperfections on the body. So there's a couple of imperfections along the running boards at the bottom of the sills, along the front as well. And of course, there's the obligatory seam which runs front to back over the front wing uh, arches or fenders, wherever you're from over the front and all over the, the top to the back out. Some of it's hidden in the panel line, so it's not too prominent to deal with. But others, we're going to have to take a bit of time and attention to deal with them. Uh, once we've got all the seams done, like I say, I've made it look easy. Like it took about five minutes. In reality, it probably took well over an hour to do. Uh, we can go over our 3000 grit Tamiya sand and sponge and key all the plastic for primer. So all we're doing is we're dulling it back, losing a high shine finish and putting thousands of micro abrasions in the plastic which will allow our primer to stick much better and we're also keying it to make a nice uniform surface for painting as well because we know preparation is key and the better job we do now the better the paint finish we'll have at the end and trust me this thing looks phenomenal when it's done now the bonnet slash hood has a cutout for the um, engine to stick through so we've used our scalpel to do the majority of the work and then our Tamiya craft knife because it's got a bit of a thicker blade on it to cut through the rest of it. And once we're through, we just snap it off and wiggle it just a little bit until it pops off. We can then grab our UMP thinning standers to remove the rest of the excess plastic and our Sujibrido half moon file to get into all those corners and nooks and crannies to clean it up properly. So do a good job here. It's a very prominent part of the body. You can see in there. We have been hacking away at it with the knife. So the finish isn't perfect. So just take your time and build up and work through and flat it all back evenly. And then we'll get our 
3000 grit tamiya sponge again and flat back the bonnet to match the rest of the body as well like i say that gives us a nice uniform surface for priming a quick test fit of the bonnet shows it fits fine it's got a bigger gap at the back and the front but overall this body is quite good the other one we did was twisted to hell the purple car we did a while back um was all twisted the body was twisted the chassis was twisted this is much better quality plastic all straight although it is an absolutely horrendous color now to clean up any nasty um fingerprints or residue left behind from the molding process we've got some pro scale pre-paint degreaser try and say that five times pre-paint degreaser pre-paint degreaser pre-paint degreaser pre-paint degreaser pre-paint degreaser pre-paint degreaser oh i nearly did it nearly and we put on a nice clean bit of tissue and we're wiping it all over and that will remove any fingerprints any mold release any nasties that are left on from manufacturing fingerprint residue which is one of the worst things in the world if you've been eating crisps chocolate satumas raisins paper staples anything like that, that you've been eating they can all leave residue behind and it will interfere with your paint and as I already said, preparation is key. Now I'm going to show the whole thing that I do here. I don't just give it a quick wipe over. I go over everywhere a couple of times and then get a nice dry piece of the kitchen paper and ensure it's all nice and dry. Now, yes, we are going to handle this again to pop it on the Tamiya stand, but it'll only be in two places on the side. Once we've got it in place, we can wipe those. Trust me, it's much easier to wipe this now because the Tamiya stand could be a bit tricky to hold bodies on while you're wiping them over. So like I say, we are going to touch it again now. But we'll get all those places we touch in a minute and clean them up. Now, lesson learned with the Dablo, which I dropped on the bench while 2K in, is we try to always use our Tamiya stand where possible and we tape the bodies on as well to ensure they don't fall off. So, a bit of Tamiya tape to secure cool them in. I have two of these Tamiya stands. One is for um, paint, as you can see the buildup of paint on this one, and the other one is for clear coat. So, it's a lot cleaner of a body to go through um sorry clean of a stand to use so we don't get any paint residue on our clear and what have you this is painted hundreds of cars well over 150 cars this stand i've had this for years uh, and i even bought it second hand many moons ago as well so it's seen a lot of action i will one day make a video of me stripping it we'll see now we've got a new airbrush today we've got an iwata lph 80 it's a mini touch-up spray gun a very kind gift for one of my generous uh, viewers and followers and patrons. Thank you, PK. You're a legend. So this was bought for painting the larger cars, uh, but it will do smaller cars with ease as well. Now, we're using some Pro Scale Primer here, the, the grey primer. Uh, I think it's actually a light grey primer. And we're in the spray gun. This is the very first time I've used this, so it took a little bit of dialing in to get it in there. I run this on my Sparmax 610 compressor. Um, and we've got everything screwed in so far, all the settings, so I need to tweak them. So the first bit of paint goes on, probably go on a little bit thick, and we fine-tune it at the end and get it perfect. But even on smaller bodies like this, it's not too bad. You've just got to dial it in so you get the right, right amount of air to atomize the paint without putting too much paint down like I just did in that front wing. So it's just a fine line. Once I had it set up, it was perfect, but it just needs tweaking to get it perfect. As you can see, I'm not getting enough paint now. So it's a case of playing with the dials until you get a nice mixture. And there we go, we just about got that there, I would say. So we get a nice coat of paint without going too wet. We don't want it to split or splatter. So a little bit of uh, trial now. Like I said, I don't think I use this very often on the smaller cars. It's a bit overkill for this. Um, I would need one of the Iwata fan pattern airbrushes really to use full time on the smaller cars. But it laid the paint down absolutely fantastic. It really did. But like I say, it's a touch overkill for 24th, I think. Uh, but as you can see, the fan pattern's not too big. And here we are after several coats. It's about three coats in now. We're getting a nice even coverage. So the idea of these guns is they don't need a high pressure. They need high volume. Now, the Sparmax doesn't give that. But on a smaller scale for what we're doing here, because we're not on the gun all the time on the air, it should survive with the uh, Sparmax 610. I still would like to upgrade to a 620, I think, just to give me that um, larger, well, the double piston, which will help fill in the tank. But this is coping quite well with this. It is literally a miniature spray gun. 
and uh, it's done a good job here putting the primer down really well same with the bonnet as well just take our time as you can see i've really got it dialed in here it's a nice fan pattern without being too big so like i say you could use this if you wanted but i'm happy um, using this on larger cars i think but you could more than happily use that on this it does work very well i will say the clean of it's a bit more of a pain than an airbrush so that would stop me using it all the time i think but on the larger cars when we do the model pack of heroes and some of the other kits i've got in the stash this is going to be absolutely fantastic it really is going to work out well and there we go one final coat on the car body i think we've got our four coats on this as you can see it's gone down absolutely smooth as silk absolutely beautiful love our primer it's great it's a brilliant uh, microfiller primer once you flat it back it goes silky silky smooth and there we go leave that to dry for a few hours flat it back and we're good to go on our paint so yeah the spray gun works really well looking forward to trying it on a larger car where i can open it up a bit more um, after the primer's dried we've got our 3000 grit uh, swiss army knife tamiya sponge which gets used for everything really uh, we're going to go around and flat all the primer just to take back any high spots any imperfections and once you've done this our primer is smooth as anything it really is super smooth and a fantastic surface for your next job which will be paint and uh, trust me give our primer a go you won't regret it at all it's absolutely fantastic stuff so we're going with chrysler green with envy um paint so this was a color suggested by dan pedersen a friend of mine and as soon as i mixed this color i was like yep i've got to use that color and this was picked out the stash for that job now again using the spray gun for the first time an actual paint is different than primer it's not a stick but using roughly the same sentence we're going to lay the paint down the same way now we don't want to go heavy with the paint we want nice light multiple thin coats we do not want to go in too heavy but it does take a bit of dialing in to get it perfect you have to alter the air and the paint volume and the fan pattern so i got the air pretty much perfect i've got the fan pattern pretty much perfect i'm just dialing in the paint now and all we want is a nice even flow and obviously we also need to get the muscle memory so it is a double action brush you pull the first part of the um travel on the trigger is just there so you can just go to where but it sprayed this paint absolutely fantastic really well and this color is absolutely phenomenal it really is a pretty color i fell in love with this as soon as i seen it and i was like yeah i gotta i gotta paint something in this and i love these super bees it's got to be one of my favorite pieces of american muscle it's just a big boat of a car and i think this was the perfect color for it so nice careful painting we don't go hose the paint on you don't want thick paint it will just look awful multiple thin coats are the way to go like i say still getting to, to grips with the uh the spray gun but it's working very well like i say on 12 scale cars much larger bodies this is going to work fantastic it's really going to cover well get nice even paint like i say we can op open it up a bit more on a larger car body now i am showing the full paint job on this i know i normally wouldn't but i want to get this airbrush uh well mini spray gun a good test and that you lot see what it's like as well they're about 250 pounds online if you shop around beautifully well made eyewater mini spray gun uh it will do a fan pattern or a spot pattern depending on how you set it up with those knobs as you can see i'm just still tweaking it have a little bit of a play around just to try and perfect that spray pattern so it does take a bit of fettling i think once you get used to it it's kind of sit and dial and forget kind of thing but it is going to change between primer and paint because obviously the paint's a lot thinner than the primer there we go that looks good so we put about seven coats on this in the end it did have several coats I'm trying to keep them nice and thin with the gun so we need to keep it moving keep the trigger action on and off near the end of each pass and obviously make sure we get in every recess and corner and get it absolutely spot on but it's a beautiful color the coverage is really well 
after several coats this is going to look absolutely fantastic it really really will look great like i say it's a big old car this thing um it's a 440 motor in this it must have been pretty quick but it must have been a bit of a barge to drive um i don't think it went around corners very quick certainly not unless it was sideways okay so we'll put plenty of coats on now i reckon this is about our seventh coat we're putting down now obviously we've been doing the bonnet and the under, under panel at the same time to make sure the color's the same as you see the color's just fantastic the depth of the color the green tone it's just beautiful it is absolutely a beautiful beautiful color and you can probably see why i kind of fell in love with it when i first saw it, it just looks absolutely fantastic um so yeah paint all the parts at the same time get the same amount of coats on there and keep it all equal now we'll go over a different build process today i'm just going to go through as i'm waiting for paint to dry so the paint's literally drying over in the booth and we're going to clean up some of the engine parts so i always start with the engine because there's multiple engine choices here as you can see there's multiple sprues i'm going to go through and cut all the engine parts off that i need otherwise i get completely confuddled as to what i'm doing Put them to one side and then go through and work out all the other parts we're going to need for the build as well. Because what I like to do is clean, assemble what can be assembled, uh, clean up, prime and paint everything as a job lot on this. Now there's lots of chrome parts. The kit chrome is fantastic, really is good. But all the catering points are right in the worst possible position where you can see them. So we are going to have to strip the chrome and re-chrome ourselves. Which, we're going to try another new product today. We're going to use the Revel Chrome. I think it's meant to be chrome, but it says chrome, in a rattle can, in a spray can. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit when we get to it. But these are all in an old Johnson's cotton bud um, lid. We've got some Domestos, Domestos sorry, bleach, and we're going to dechrome it. So literally, watch this before your eyes, and the chrome will literally disappear in about a minute, I would say. I think it takes about a minute to fully disappear. Just watch it, and watch it, and watch it. And just watch. Keep watching. You ready? Any second now. There you go. Watch those headlights on the main grill. It's like magic, this. Now, the thing with Chrome is it either strips it instantly like this, or it doesn't do it at all, or it takes several days. Thankfully, on this, it did it right before my eyes and yours. This isn't speeded up. This is real time. And it took it all off very quickly in one go. So very lucky there. Can't complain about that at all. And with all those parts stripped off, we rinse them under water to clean them out and put them to one side to air dry. We can assemble some of the engines. So we've got all our correct engine components here now. Uh, we're just going to start gluing together anything that's going to be the same colour. If you can glue it on and they're all going to be painted the same colour, glue them on because it saves painting one more individual part. saves time and paint. So we'll go through the engine block with my Tammy Extra Thin Plasti Weld Mix. Glue it all together. We've glued the gearbox halves together. We're just having a test fit. We're going to leave this separate today, I think, and paint it separately. So we're just having a test fit, see how it goes, and it actually fits in there quite well. Actually, not a bad engine on this at all. Not too bad at all. We've got the cylinder heads being glued in place too, and the water pump housing at the front, which is glued in place. There we go. There's the cylinder heads going in. So just a very light coating. Don't need a lot of glue. There's no need to make this messy. Dip your brush, wipe it off, and just run it over the plastic. No need to squeeze it either. You don't want any molten plastic everywhere. And then the actual um, valve covers on the top as well. They were chrome. We're going to paint them in uh, GM Engine Orange. Good point. I said Chrysler before, didn't I? Is it meant to be GM? Dream of Envy? I forget now. I'm pretty sure it's GM, isn't it? Or is it Chrysler? I forget. Do you know what? I've had a brain fart and I cannot remember. Anyway. There's our valve covers in place. Sumps on as well. We've got that on. Like I say, just a quick test fit of the gearbox to go in. And we'll clean it all up as well. So let the glue dry, hit it with your UMP um, thinning sponges. I like using the sponges on rounded parts like this because it doesn't change the profile of them. And then we've got our distributor. So we've got a gopher distributor on this one. I've chosen yellow to go with the, engine, uh, the orange block. Just 
So we're just widening the hole that's on the actual block from standard. And a quick test for this is going to need trimming later on. It fits perfect, but we've got our wire metal cutters. Just to shorten it, and we're going to pop it fully home like so. There we go. Fits in perfect. That will do me. We've got our carburetors. The carburetors aren't the best. They're in two halves. They're a bit basic on detail. They're not the best at all. But they do the job okay. It's a shame because they're quite prominent sticking out of the bonnet. That they weren't a bit better quality. But it's AMT. It is what it is. It's just one of those things. So they're glued together. And then we've gone through and cut off all of the parts that we're going to need. Like I say, these kits are a mismatch of several different kits. So there's all sorts in here that we're not going to need. So it's carefully going through the instructions, figure out what you want. And then we're going to clean it all up as a job lot. The exhaust, I'm going to drill out the end of them. They are side exit exhausts on this one. So I've got my pin vise with a 2 mil drill bit. And I'm just slowly and gently drilling away at the ends. Until we have a nice hollowed out end drill bit, a drill bit, exhaust tip, drill bit. And there we go. Just take your time, be nice and careful. And you have them done in no time. Now you could use a power tool if you want this, a Dremel or what have you, but you need to be very, very careful. I prefer doing things like this by hand. It just gives you more, more precision. And then we're going to clean it all up with our UMP thinning sponges. So we've got a lot of parts to clean up, but it seems to make sense to clean them all up in one go. That way we can have a primer session and a paint session. And as I say, we can glue parts in place. They're all going to be the same color. And it's not going to interfere with fitment later on. You can do so. All the chassis and the subrail, uh, the uh, rails underneath are all going to be the same colour. So we can prime all these in black. Um, as well assemble it now. Rather than painting and trying to glue parts later on, we can glue them all in place right now. And trust me, it saves time and it's well worth doing. Put the anti wall bar in place there as well. And there we go. And then the exhaust headers or manifolds we've already test fitted. Got a rough idea where they go already. So I'm just going to hold them together, have a quick test fit, make sure you get them the right way around. I've been known to put these on backwards before. I think I did that on my Ferrari, like an idiot. And then we can see roughly where they need to go. So I know where to pinch them and hold them, and then we can glue them together. So like I say, it's not too bad of a kit, this. It's a bit basic in places. Some of the, the parts are a bit basic, but overall, it wasn't a bad kit to build at all. And again, time you extra thin. A little bit. You don't need to go mad. Don't squeeze it too hard. We're not trying to get a weld seam. We're just trying to glue these two parts together. So don't go crazy. Less is definitely more with glue. It can make a whole mess before you know it. So we're gluing stuff in here. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's the roll cage. There we go. I couldn't see what it was for a second. Um, this is the roll cage. Three parts of the roll cage. It's just like a, a half roll cage. So we've test fitted it in the car. We can see the angle it needs to go. I've just very lightly glued these parts in place. We'll pop it back in the car to get a rough idea where it goes. Now we're in the booth. We've got some GX2 gloss black from Mr. Hobby. And we're getting a nice gloss black base down on all the parts. We're going to spray in chrome. So we're going straight onto the styrene. This is some of the stuff we de-chromed. So it's been well and truly cleaned out with fresh water. Then a bit of UMP airbrush cleaner just to get rid of any nasties that might be left. Let it dry. Let it air dry for a few hours. And then we can come in with the GX2 Gloss Black straight on plastic I find is best for this. And get a nice, real deep, shiny Gloss Black finish. That will give us the best possible chrome finish we can get then. Wheels, we're going to do the backs of the wheels, something I always forget, actually remember today. As you can see, I'm not shy with the paint. We get quite a bit of a coat down, let it dry for 5-10 minutes, come back and put another coat on. You just want a nice, even, gloss black finish. 
We've then got some Mr. Service of 1500 black on the interior. Um, we are going for a black on black interior. We're going to have grey carpets in this though. Anthracite grey flock from Pro Scale. And it's going to look great. Trust me. It's going to look absolutely perfect later on. But for now, we just want a nice gloss. Uh, sorry, a nice Mr. Surfacer black primer surface. Uh, we're going to go with jet black leather from Pro Scale on the interior. A nice pure black black leather, I think. And then on the chassis, give it a nice generous coat of um, Mr. Surfacer 1500 again. Looks like I'm putting loads down. There's, there's quite a bit going down, but it's been built up slowly. And uh, because of all the nooks and crannies, it does take a bit of spraying to do, but it's a very forgiving primer to spray. Obviously, remember to inside the engine bay parts where you'll be looking down. And then we're onto the seats. Seats in this are really nice seats. Very, very nice bucket style seats. Actually, was quite surprised when I seen the quality of these. Uh, I did contemplate putting harnesses on, and then thought, nah, we don't need harnesses. Steering wheel, we're going to do in Joe's camera release way again. We're going to paint it in um, white Tamiya fine surface primer. Then we'll paint it flesh and use our wood colours and some clear orange to get our wood effect grain later on. I'll explain that as we do it. Engine, we're priming in Tamiya white primer as well because this is going orange. We've got Pro Scales GM engine orange to pop on this as well, which is a fantastic colour. There we go, nice generous coat of that. And here we go. So I have the Revel Chrome. This is in the rattle can. Now we're basically testing it here, so I've not really shown it. So I'm going to do a more in-depth Chrome video for patrons coming up later on. But I'm going to test several Chrome paints and see how they react. So this is a spray can. It was £25 for a small spray can of it. Very expensive. I've decanted some. I haven't thinned it. It's straight out the airbrush. And we're going to put a generous coat on. If you've ever sprayed Molotov, you'll know exactly how I'm spraying this now. We get a light coat down, and then you've literally got to hose it on to get a nice uh, chrome finish. And what we're going to do, we're going to leave that to dry for a day, and then come back the next day and clear it with aqua gloss like we have with Molotov before, and see how that reacts. Now, the paint test I'm going to do uh, is with several different chromes and different manufacturers over different primers. Um, using different clear coats to test how it reacts. Um, so look forward to doing that video. Like I say, I'm going to do that for patrons at some point coming up. It's going to take a bit of work to do. It's going to take lots and lots of spoons to test. But I think it'll be a worthy test because the chrome is kind of the holy grail. This stuff seems to work really well. And spoiler alert, it was quite resilient with the aqua gloss finish. So make your mind up at the end what you think of the chrome finish in part three when you see it. But this here is looking great. Really, really nice finish. And airbrushing it, it's a lot more, um, what's the word? You don't use as much paint. It's a lot more thrifty to do it this way. We've got some engine, no we haven't. We've got LP61. No, we didn't, my, my bad. We're using stainless steel from Mr. Hobby Super Metallic on this. I remember what I did now. It's been a while since I filmed this. Um, it's been about a week since I filmed this. So you get a bit rusty on what you're doing when you're working on other kits. Uh, yes, we went for stainless steel exhaust on the interior. We're going to use LP5. And on the steering wheel, we've got some uh, flesh, which is LP66. And that's the start of our wood effect. We've got some LP7 for the shocks. So I decided to do those in red. Then we've got our Pro Scale General Motors Engine Orange for the engine as well. So this is through my uh, iWater Revolution 0.3. We're right at about 18, 16, 18 PSI. I'm just going to put several light coats down, building it up nice and slow. You don't want to go too heavy with any of these paints. Just nice and slow. There's no benefit from going heavy. It does not go glossy. It will be a satin finished paint no matter how wet you put it on. So you don't need to go heavy at all. Just concentrate on getting coverage rather than hosing the paint on. So getting all those nooks and crannies, all the recesses, all the panel lines, any gaps, getting all those and make sure you get nice, even coverage. And here we go. After three coats, beautiful engine orange color, which looks absolutely fantastic. Really is looking good. 
And then we have our Pro Scale Jet Black Leather for our interior now as well. So, like I said, we're going to go with Anthracite Grey, which is a dark grey slash black carpet. Um, I was going to go with Napa Black Leather, and I thought, you know what, let's go with the Jet Black. Let's have a nice dark black leather interior. So that's what we're doing here. And again, several light coats. We don't want this to be super shiny, because leather in reality isn't super shiny. We want a nice satin finish. So we're just going to very lightly build it up as we go through. Like so. And so we get nice even coverage all around and obviously do the door cards and the rear seat as well. And then we can mask off or pe and paint or as we're going to do, we're going to brush paint some enamel paint on and then apply the Pro Scale Anthracite Grey Flock. I will do a video on the Pro Scale Flock at a coming date, uh, later date, sorry. Um, but for now, this is what we're going. Now, don't forget as well, these videos you're watching now. Sorry, let me just explain this. The Revel Chrome has now dried overnight, and we're hitting this up now with our Aqua Gloss. So we're going to put a couple of light coats on. We're not going too heavy with it. We're just getting a nice even coat down. Now, it does dull the Chrome a touch, but not enough that you'd be like, oh, it's ruined it. And it is handleable when it's done. So, yes, we can uh, handle it safely after it's dried. But the 24 hours between each process from the Gloss Black from the chrome and the aqua gloss and that way you know everything's dry but it did work really well and i'm very happy with the chrome there we go that's where we're at today so like i say different process we've not got to the clear coat which i know some we've actually looked forward to i do it myself um that's going to come in part two or maybe part three hmm. we'll see on that one hey um but yeah we've made good progress on it much cleaner body on this horrendous plastic color really is horrible um but the body itself nice and clean really good oh i've just opened uh amazon apparently no i haven't um yes much nicer body all the chassis straight on this and it's gonna be i know it is it's already finished it's there somewhere can you see it? where is she no oh she's there look there she is right there look oh. spoiler alert, you've probably already seen it but anyway um yeah no issues so far going forward but like i say we've done this in a slightly different order like i say our new patrons can see this on a release if you're watching this um and yeah there we go thanks to all the patrons your name should be flashing across the screen right now you're all legends thank you very much couldn't do this without you guys so my humblest thanks to you all uh you're all absolutely brilliant uh, as always if you've got any suggestions or comments pop them down below i'm all ears um the other two parts of build are edited as is the free one for ism i've been quite busy on the video editing um so we're going to upload videos to our to patron now um probably twice a week so it'll be around wednesday and sundays roughly going forward all right i've been chucking them on as and when i've got them but i think if we stick to a schedule we'll see how that goes let me know your thoughts on that if you're rather me just put them up and they're done no problem but if i can get a schedule it helps me and on ism they're probably going to go up once a week on a saturday or sunday as well because i won't have as much content to go over there anymore unfortunately I'm trying to drive people to Patreon, if I'm honest. You guys are my patrons, and I appreciate that. And you're the guys who should be rewarded for this. And that's my idea of doing this. And hopefully bring a few people across as well. Don't forget to go watch my first weekly bench update, which I did the other day as well. And uh, yeah, I want an upward to this. And let's see where we can go with it all. All right. Hope you enjoyed that video today. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up. You're all subscribed, hopefully, to the channel. And I don't need to give you the patron spiel because you're always there. But I'm open to all and any feedback or suggestions. Pop it down below. And uh, we'll be back with part two of this probably on Wednesday of next week. All right. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.